Magna, are you facilitating today? Sure, I can start. Uh, okay. Second. Okay. Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you all for joining uh, this uh, SIG security meeting. Um, per as, as this is uh, this meeting is being recorded, right? And since this is a, a CNCF uh, meeting as well, just make sure that you are uh, following the, the code of conduct from CNCF. And um, anything else, Andres, before we start? That sounds all good. Okay. Good. Welcome, Ben. Thanks, Magnum. Thank you. Yeah. So, yeah, today uh, we're going to have a presentation by Jen Burns from MITRE. Uh, she's going to speak uh, about the MITRE attack for containers, uh, the first draft, which was released uh, last month, and, and uh, provide us with some information and guidance on how we could help improve this uh, initiative. Uh, Jen, feel free, take it away. Yeah, for sure. Let me uh, put this together like a short slide deck, so I'll see if I can uh, share my screen here real quick. Okay. All right, let's see, you able to see that okay? Yes. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so uh, I guess first off, thanks for having me today. Uh, Jim Burns, I work at MITRE. Uh, right now I'm the lead of Attack for Cloud. And uh, a few months ago at this point, we kind of kicked off this project with uh, MITRE Ingenuity's Center for Threat and Form Defense to uh, research adversarial behavior in containers and really determine if there's a possibility of uh, including container techniques into attack. So at this point, like uh, Magno said, we've released first draft of the matrix for feedback from the community. Uh, we've already received lots of really great feedback. Just want to talk to you folks about, um, you know, really attack itself, kind of that first draft that we released and how we could use your help and how we could potentially, you know, collaborate on this. So, uh, Figured I'd just give a short background on attack. I know some folks may be familiar, uh, some may not. So uh, kind of start off with that and then just kind of hope to kick off a discussion on, you know, that contribution process and collaboration process. Um, really feel free to interrupt me or ask questions at any point. Uh, definitely happy to answer whatever I can. But to, uh, to start off, attack uh, itself, it's a knowledge base of adversary behavior. It was born out of a series of uh, red team and blue team operations at MITRE's Maryland site around uh, 2013. Originally, it focused exclusively on the Windows platform. But since then, it's kind of expanded into like Mac OS, Linux, um, mobile, even network devices, ICS, and then also uh, the cloud, which is my area of focus. And then this containers piece is kind of tangential to that. A uh, key point about attack, it's based on real world observations of adversaries. So what adversaries have done in the past and what they're likely doing now based on those previous observations. Uh, it's not really meant to include kind of more of the theoretical proof of concept attacks. It really focuses more on what real adversaries have done because uh, we you know, believe that there's definitely value in prioritizing those types of behaviors based on threat intel. Another key point about attack, it's free, it's open, uh, it's globally accessible, anybody can use attack. And because it's free and open, it kind of provides uh, common language that different teams and organizations can use to uh, make sure they're on the same page. And then last but uh, certainly not least, attack is driven by the community. A large portion of attack has been contributed from uh, outside of MITRE. Uh, we shape many of our decisions based on uh, the needs and requests from the security community. For this containers work specifically, uh, at this point, the vast majority of the techniques have been uh, driven by contributions from the community, which is pretty awesome. Uh, you know, you folks are the ones uh, out there with boots on the ground really seeing what adversaries are doing and defending uh, defending enterprises. So having those contributions is, is pretty invaluable to us and it really leads most of the work that we do. 
uh, just to kind of take it a step further and really explaining what attack is. Uh, this model from David Bianco is pretty helpful. Uh, if you're not familiar, this is called the pyramid of pain. Uh, it describes how some indicators that adversaries leave behind are more painful for them to change than others. So for example, if you think of something like a hash value, if an adversary changes a single bit in a file, uh, that hash value is going to change. It's almost painless for them. Then on the defender side, you know, carrying out actions based on something like hash values as limited utility, since the adversary can easily easily change them. Uh, you know, similarly, adversaries uh, can do things like register new domains, IP addresses per campaign. So if you're just monitoring for those, you might miss some activity. And then moving up the pyramid to what is most painful for the adversaries to change, we see that tactics, techniques, and procedures, and that's uh, really where attack lies. Um, you know, adversaries are humans too, just like us. They are uh, creatures of habit. It's painful to change their behaviors. So as a defender, if you can detect those behaviors or TTPs, uh, you have a better chance at thwarting those adversaries. Uh, if you're familiar with attack, you're probably most familiar with the uh, enterprise attack matrix. Uh, as a heads up, you can also find all this on our website at attack.minor.org. Across the top are tactics, or what we consider to be the technical goals of adversaries. And then within each column are the techniques, or how those particular goals may be achieved, such as gaining persistence via uh, the technique of account manipulation. More recently, we added sub techniques to the matrix and you'll see this with containers as well so for example here the the technique phishing has three sub techniques and these are just more specific techniques that fall under that technique of phishing and then within techniques and sub techniques we have a set of procedures and these are adversary implementations of specific techniques so uh, for example here we see a specific implementation of the spear phishing attachment technique carried out by apt12 and that's uh, mapped to a couple of open source threat reports for references uh, to dive just a bit more into techniques before we kind of dig into containers uh, here's an example of a technique on our website, which is process injection. Uh, you'll see we lead off each technique with a description. And really that description explains what the behavior or technique is from the perspective of the adversary. And then we have these little cards on the right side of each page that calls out things like the tactics that a technique belongs to, what systems may be affected, such as Linux, Windows, and Mac OS. Uh, you know, when we get containers into attack, there would be a platform here, most likely just called containers. Uh, we also have different cloud platforms that may be included here as well. Uh, and then currently we also have data sources here and uh, data sources kind of explain what sensors, so to speak, may be used for detection of uh, this particular technique. So uh, kind of get more into to, you know, the containers bit. Why are we investigating uh, the container space for attack? First off, we've had the community ask for it. Uh, like I mentioned, attack is largely driven by the community and the needs of the community. Before we started uh, researching adversary behavior in this space, it was probably one of the questions I received the most from uh, fo folks when talking about attack for cloud. It's kind of like the, the what about containers piece. Uh, you may also be familiar with uh, Microsoft's uh, release of their Kubernetes threat matrix. We've seen folks start to uh, adopt this as their threat model, which is great. I think this just gives more weight to the fact that folks are looking for something to kind of utilize in this threat-based space for containers. Uh, also, we're finding threat intel and reports that mention behaviors in the container space, uh, often tied to Linux and cloud as well. We want to be able to kind of represent those container specific behaviors within attack, even though the behaviors might kind of bounce across cloud containers and Linux. And then also one of the reasons we're able to take up this work is it's actually a project through uh, MITRE Ingenuity's Center for Threat and Form Defense. Uh, this really just kind of gave us that opportunity to take off and, uh, and run, so to speak, with this new space for attack. All right, so kind of when it comes to 
um, you know, what we did first, um, you know, really came down to researching the adversary behavior in the container space. Um, and so we kind of started by searching for open source intelligence in the area. There was some good content from uh, folks like Palo Alto. Magno sent us some great content from uh, Trend Micro. Uh, Aqua had put some stuff out too. We also have uh, ties to folks in the community who have uh, visibility into what adversaries are doing in this space. So we definitely leveraged those and received contributions from them, uh, as well as we kind of started developing that draft matrix. We've actually been in touch throughout this process with Microsoft, uh, kind of regarding that Kubernetes threat matrix, since that was kind of one of our uh, final pushes to, hey, we need to do something with this and attack. They gave us a really great uh, starting point with the work that they had done. Uh, one of the things that kind of sets their threat matrix separate from what we're working on, though, is that uh, in the wild element of attack, I um, mentioned this in the blog we released with that first draft of the containers matrix, but uh, one of the first steps that we did as a team was actually work with Microsoft to determine, you know, out, out of what they have, which behaviors in their matrix had been carried out in the wild by adversaries. Um, and we also, you know, published a, an initial blog kind of during this kickoff of the project asking for intel on what adversaries are doing uh, in containers in the wild. So then we basically organize that content, those contributions into kind of these distinct behaviors or buckets, um, so techniques based on tactics. And then for each of those techniques or behaviors, we determined, is this something that's already covered in attack? So if so, for those behaviors, we would consider, uh, you know, maybe simply just adding a new platform tag to that technique, like that containers platform tag. Um, so we would maybe add that tag, maybe a line or two to the technique on how that um, current technique applies to the container space. Uh, maybe, you know, add more content to the detection as well to how that kind of applies to containers. If that behavior, though, wasn't already covered in attack, uh, that means we need to add a new technique or sub technique in attack to kind of cover that behavior. So, uh, you know, building out those new portions of uh, attack and kind of carving out what that might look like. That's actually been a really, uh, really large chunk of this work. At this point, we're still going through feedback we've received from folks and really refining our matrix. Uh, we're also building out those detections, data sources, mitigations, other pieces of attack, uh, particularly for the techniques that would be considered new to attack due to this uh, addition of containers. Timeline-wise, we're hoping that uh, containers will be added in the April release of attack, which is, um, you know, in the next month or so. Um, there are some dependencies that, uh, that we have there that may or may not be met. So we haven't officially confirmed that release yet, but that is what we're targeting at this point. And so this is what uh, we released with our blog post is that first draft of a containers matrix. Uh, I'm gonna, I can come back to this uh, and talk to you folks more about this and answer questions you might have about it. I uh, just want to go through kind of the next slide real quick first. So uh, how can you help? Uh, we've already received you know, lots of feedback from the community. This has been a huge community effort. There's gonna be a lot of uh, contributors added to attack with this uh, effort to add containers, but we do still have some uh, thoughts and questions where we could use some help. One uh, is, do we have any gaps in the matrix? Uh, have you seen or heard of, you know, in the wild adversary behaviors that are currently not represented uh, with what we have for our draft? And this is, you know, really focused on the in the wild piece. So not that kind of theoretical what could happen or what our red team's doing. It's really focused on, you know, the, the real adversaries. What are they doing? Um, also, do you have intel on adversaries using containers for other traditional purposes, such as for something like exfiltration or collection? Uh, what we've been finding is that most of what's out there, really the, <clears throat> the end goal or the objective of the adversary is coin mining, crypto mining. 
So is there, uh, are adversaries out there doing uh, like all of these behaviors to ultimately do something other than that crypto mining piece? We really wanna understand if that's really, you know, the, the main objective of adversaries in this space right now. Uh, next, kind of besides uh, deploying new containers, do you have intel on lateral movement behaviors that would fit into containers, uh, something like moving from container to container or pod to pod, et cetera? Um, you know, we've kind of what we've been seeing is uh, there's a lot of gaining access to the environment and then deploying um, new containers versus like getting access to a container and then moving laterally to another. So we're trying to, to kind of suss out, is there like this idea of lateral movement in containers that adversaries are actually taking advantage of, or is it more of like a theoretical concept of you can move laterally? Uh, kind of fourth here, did we get something wrong? Uh, is there something completely inaccurate or did we name something weirdly? We've gotten a, actually a lot of great feedback on this already. Uh, we know the the technique we're calling container service, that's not a great name. Um, it's kind of vague. So we're, we're currently working on trying to suss out, you know, what else could we call this? Should we split this into multiple uh, techniques or add sub techniques to it? But, you know, any thoughts that folks might have there would be super helpful for us. And then finally, we're kind of at this point where we're building out detection logic to add to attack for these uh, for these specific techniques and you know a lot of it on our end has been uh, you know kind of reading through what recommendations are in this space uh, we don't have like this lab where we're seeing uh, adversary activity and trying to detect it ourselves so uh, we're kind of you know hoping that folks in the community who are doing detections in this space would be able to really help us kind of build those out. And so with that, that's kind of all, uh, all I have here. I think that I saw some folks are posting like questions and things so I can kind of see what's going on there. Uh, let's see. But uh, also if folks have any questions, super happy to, to dig into some of this. The one thing I noted, by the way, Jen, awesome, awesome presentation. My attack framework is not only heard from from the from like government sources and it's I'm seeing in like investment banks using it as their overall like framework of like here's how like to to use this to be able to like kind of have this framework for attack and all of that mm -hmm. fun stuff. But I just noted that like a lot of the mappings that are happening from the various vendors that are out there there's some amazing stuff going on and i think there's a there's a place for like every you know a, a lot of different solutions to be able to, to to be able to like fit into that framework because you can easily map these to these you know specific quadrants that you have so i wanted mm -hmm. to tell you you all did a, an amazing job and i appreciate you <laughs> coming out and doing doing this for us awesome yeah thanks dan appreciate it <laughs> jan regarding intel around lateral moves what kind of information do you seek? You, you talk about this is not theoretical. How yeah. evidence-based does that need to be? Are you seeking forensics? Is it anecdotal? Yeah, so I don't know if we need like, um, like a, kind of the, the low level details of what's going on. It's more so like, really just proof or I say proof, but, you know, attestation from somebody who has that visibility saying, yeah, I see, uh, I've seen an adversary move from container to container using X or like using this procedure. It doesn't have to be like the actual logs or anything like that. Just kind of an example of of what that looks like in the space. Um, and that's kind of where we're, you know, people are saying, hey, this is possible these different ways, but our adversary is actually doing that. That's kind of the piece that we're looking for. Okay, perfect. And at the same time, proposed mitigations, I presume. Yeah, yeah, those are always good for sure. We're kind of uh, like the same thing we're doing with with detections, we're doing with mitigations. You know, there's a lot of, uh, there's some open source intel out there about what's going on, but there's not as much on how to defend against it. And so, 
you know, we're trying to figure out like what are the best ways to 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 build your defenses. So mitigations are are definitely super helpful. Um, since we kind of don't have that kind of lab set up to be able to, to, to su totally suss it out on our own, you know. Totally. Hi, this is a great presentation, Jen. Uh, this is Vinay Venkatragan here. Uh, I'm, I'm actually part of Palo Alto Networks and I know nice. that they contributed some uh, information there. I'm just wondering, you know, recently we've had a lot of initiatives within the SIG security group to, you know, talk about cloud native security and the right posture across the entire application lifecycle, if you will, right? Mm -hmm. the, the build, deploy, distribute, run aspects. I'm wondering, do you think it'll be useful if we were able to see from a defense perspective to your point, how do you protect against these types of attacks to take all these, this collateral that we have built up and see how do we map it and then call out like here's here are the specific types of attack uh, patterns and here, if you adopted this kind of uh, defense and protection techniques, you could potentially have avoided or, or, or protected against that particular attack pattern. Do, do you think that kind of, uh, 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 how do you say, story would be useful for people who are embarking and trying to protect against these types of attacks? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think so. And this is kind of, you know, I've been doing this with cloud too. It's always kind of a gray area, especially like with the, with these matrices. It's like, where do you transfer from cloud to containers to Linux, et cetera. And so having examples uh, kind of going across all of these different platforms, I think helps kind of tie things together for folks. Um, and to give, I guess, some clarity on to how we are scoping uh, containers at this point. So we're kind of thinking of cloud, like um, AWS, um, Azure, GCP, et cetera, which we're actually, as a heads up there, if you're using um, those matrices in this next release in April, we're combining all of those into a single infrastructure as a service matrix in attack, because if you actually look through each one, AWS, GCP, Azure, uh, the techniques are the same. So like at a high level, the, the behaviors are the same. It's just at the procedural level, it's slightly different between the different cloud service providers. But it, that, so that's kind of a tangent. But um, for cloud itself, like IaaS, we're thinking of it as more um, like of the cloud versus in the cloud. So for example, um, what you find at the cloud control plane or the management plane, what you can get from uh, like cloud trail logs, logging at that level. Um, and then once it kind of pivots onto the host, like an EC2 instance, that's covered by the Linux matrix. So if you want to have coverage kind of across both, you would layer something like this new IaaS or AWS now matrix onto Linux to kind of explain, okay, here's my coverage across my, my kind of fleet of instances within cloud and the cloud management plane. For containers, it's kind of in that area between cloud and like Linux or the host. So we're thinking of it as more uh, kind of in a similar fashion to cloud, like it's uh, things you would get from like uh, logging in, in Docker or Kubernetes, um, things of that nature. So once it pivots onto the host, like a, an example here would be like deploying um, uh, like g gaining access to um, like a Kubernetes environment, deploying a container, that's all, you know, here in containers. As soon as the, the adversary gets a shell on the host uh, and does something like deploying like coin mining malware, et cetera, that's where the pivot to Linux would be for containers. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I think having, you know, and something that we need, we are considering putting out ourselves, like some sort of blog on here's how you pivot between each of these. But the more that the community is able to put out that type of um, those type of details, I think that's just going to help everybody understand, like, how do we use this across like our entire cloud, something of that nature. So that was probably more words than I needed to put in there, but hopefully that that helps. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, so so from an input uh, standpoint, if you know, for, for example, right, you know, you know, mapping host mount points is a, is a great way of let's say you run a container, let's say there's a malware, and you can exploit this, uh, you know, persistent host mount, mm -hmm. uh, move and get some kind of access onto the host and then do those lateral movements. So there are these very, very 
uh, I think kind of reasonably well established attack patterns from a container yep. standpoint and then how they move from a container to the host and then they move. So just amplifying that message and then hopefully, and the, but how can we help MITRE uh, and bring back that kind of telemetry? Yeah, I think, you know, just putting out, probably just putting out your own, uh, like blogs, et cetera, on it is super helpful. Um, finding things that are novel uh, to that, uh, kind of that cycle, uh, that would be helpful. I think what we have now in the containers matrix is based on like a, a lot of open source Intel. It's interesting for containers, there's actually significantly more uh, open source Intel than for cloud uh, itself. So that was actually made my, our job a lot easier with containers versus cloud. But uh, basically finding anything novel in that process would be helpful for us too. Uh, and then when you like put uh, put things out about it, like a blog or something of that nature, mapping it back to attack so people can understand how the techniques and attack apply there. Yeah, makes sense. Thanks a lot, Jen. Yeah, absolutely. I kind of want to echo what uh, Vinay said as well, and basically like whatever help that we, you know, any of any of us in, in SIG security, like I'm not going to talk for everybody here, but like, you know, in terms of like us is help to help you kind of, uh, you know, map or things that you're kind of unclear on, uh, you know, uh, we're, we're seeing this on a day-to-day -day basis and for us to be able to like help with some of the mitigations that you talked about, some of the attestation, all of those types of things where, you know, whatever you need from us, like now you have all of our, you know where to get, you know where to get us now, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. I, and even as we're, you know, before we do a, a release for this and, you know, like I said, we, we're hoping for the April, but we'll kind of see how, how it all goes. Um, you know, even before doing that release or right after the release, the detections we release, you know, making sure that those make sense. I think we could certainly use a lot of help there with folks with kind of the, the boots on the ground. So and I can kind of maybe coordinate with, with Magno a bit on this too. But um, if I can get some of that stuff uh, potentially re uh, publicly released a little bit early, I might be able to get some feedback on that as well from you folks, which would be really great if, if you're willing. <laughs> Hey, Jen, uh, do you have any more information about any uh, the contributions for the infrastructure of the service attack matrix? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, pretty much what really helps us. Um, so you can send to attack at mitre.org. Uh, we have like a set of here's a there's a contribute section on our website that kind of gives you an idea of how to write up a contribution, et cetera. But mainly when we get those contributions and what I personally look for is the first off kind of that in the wild uh, piece. So either like a mapping of that behavior to something that's open source or an attestation that yes, we did see this, an adversary do this in the wild. Um, so it's like, you know, it's helpful to have it all written up the way it says on the website, but really we, we take contributions and we kind of fit it into how, how we process attack, so to speak. But um, but yeah, if you have stuff that's not in the IaaS matrix um, that you've seen adversaries do, just send a message to attack at miter.org and that just pretty much instantly gets it into my uh, in my inbox. And then we can kind of go back and forth on it. Awesome. Great. Thank you. Yeah. We often know that's exactly how it happened. We didn't get to see it firsthand. Right. <laughs> but yeah, all of it certainly resonates. Awesome. I don't know. I don't know if any of you, you folks, have gotten a chance to look at the draft matrix. I know Magno has. He sent me um, some really awesome feedback already. Um, but do you guys have any questions, like on, like how how any of these we got to the to the conclusion of any of these techniques or what any of the the mean or anything of that nature? And if not, that's totally okay. No. okay. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, hey, Jen. Yeah. Just uh, one more thing from me. Yeah. Thank you sure. for the presentation. It was really great. Um, yeah. I, I think that one one thing that sometimes it confuses me is in regards to that fine line between what fits in the containers and what fits in the Linux uh, matrix, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, um, 
I'm not sure, like some, something as like uh, Vinay mentioned, like deploying a privileged container that maps into the host and then you have access to the host environment. Uh, um, how can we, how, how do you process that? And, and how, how, what is the thought process if, if that would fit into the container matrix or, or into the Linux one? Yeah, I think from what you just said, it kind of goes across both. So doing the deployment of the container and even um, the mapping. So like uh, if you do like a, uh, like a, a file system mount or something like that to escape to the host, once that escape occurs and the follow on behaviors are on the host, that would be Linux, but also just deploying that container once it starts, uh, you know, once the adversary starts doing things like uh, pulling down malicious content via curl, things like that, that would be Linux. So if it's stuff that is like um, it, the container piece, like to an extent, it, it doesn't matter, quote unquote. So if it's something that you could just do on a Linux host itself, that would generally be kind of that pivot into Linux. We've kind of been our, our catchphrase, so to speak, has just been, uh, if it's Linux, it's Linux. So that's kind of what we're trying to, to, to go with with this. But there is that like kind of pivot point. So it's almost, I think some of the pivot points we've seen, it's, it's kind of like that deploy container piece after the deployment, like those follow on activities tend to be just Linux. So we would map those to Linux. Mm -hmm. um, and kind of the same escape to host once you have that privilege escalation from the container to the host, everything that happens on that host, if it's not just deploying other containers or something of that nature, that's that's Linux. Okay, awesome. Yeah, sounds good, thank you. Sure. I had one other comment, if I may, really quickly. Uh, and Jen, this goes back to your comment about the AWS Azure GCP, the IAS. Um, mm -hmm. Is it the, the matrix or the, the, the recommendations? So this is shared responsibility, right? So we've all been so conditioned in the cloud to, you know, you said off the cloud and in the cloud, right? So off the cloud. So is there some recommendation you also provide where, you know, a lot of us, we really don't care of off the cloud, right? Because that is exactly why the CSPs are there. You know, they are, that's their responsibility. And the in the cloud portion is what we as either, let's just say cloud customers and uh, container customers, whatever, are, are responsible for. So how do you, do you, do you have any recommendations on how you help people sift through the separation of responsibility and concern there? Yeah, so I think that of the cloud piece, we could probably just split that into a couple sections. And it's like the of the cloud that the cloud service provider is responsible for. And then the, the part that we're kind of responsible for, like, um, you know what you could find uh, like i mentioned like in something like cloud trail logs so if you can like get visibility into those areas that's that's more of where we're focused on we're not as focused with attack on just things that the cloud service providers would be responsible for um there might be like some like small um, nuances to that but in general, we're more focused on, hey, I have uh, like uh, CloudTrail, CloudWatch, et cetera, um, Azure activity logs. What can I, what am I responsible for in those, in those logs, if that makes sense? Yeah, and I think it's also generally speaking, also it's very confusing, right? Because everybody just says, just like I did, off the cloud, in the cloud. Right, right. But where exactly <laughs> does that responsibility to your, to your point about having access to that information? That also makes sense. Thank you, Jen. Yeah, absolutely. Hi, my name is Bhavan. I work at Trend Micro. I manage the cloud and container threat research team here. Uh, thanks for the session, Chen. Yeah. Uh, amazing. Uh, on Vinay's comment there, I think he brought up a good point there. Uh, but I just wanted to add my thoughts that from a MITRE point of view, from an attack matrix point of view, I think it doesn't matter whether it's a CSP responsibility versus the customer responsibility. I think a technique is a technique. If you can figure out a way to break into an AWS system, it's still a technique that an adversary could potentially use. Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah, we can be pretty much transparent to that from a micro point of view. Yeah, that, that definitely makes sense to me. I think the um, maybe the differentiation is 
we uh, so we're, this is another spot especially with cloud there's not a lot of open source intel so when they first were putting the cloud matrix together it was highly dependent once again on like um, contributions so we might not have like the details of what is going on from that cloud uh, cloud service provider perspective, like what they might have visibility into. So I guess that, that's probably the difference and probably why, like, I, I definitely agree with you. Like if it's, if it's um, a technique, it's definitely a technique. We might just not have that visibility to be able to add that um, into attack, if that makes sense. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Oh. Uh, hi, Jen. I, I had a question. Um, sure. Have you, uh, so mostly we assume that when it's a container or Kubernetes, we, I, I think we assume it is Linux, but I've seen some people run Windows containers too. And uh, so have you ever thought about uh, those things like, hey, um, like it could also run on uh, Windows and have you ever thought about that mapping? Can it be like Linux plus containers and Windows plus containers in your mapping? Or have you ever thought about those things? Yeah, that's a good point. And I think most of the, almost uh, all of the intel that we've received has been uh, ultimately like um, behaviors that were carried out and the containers moving to Linux. Uh, I think if we find uh, or are given intel uh, in the Windows space, I absolutely think that we would, you know, kind of pivot from containers to Linux also to, to Windows. and um, we also kind of our philosophy with adding platform tags to like existing techniques is that if uh, a technique or a behavior can happen on um, Windows, for example, or has happened on Windows, for example, but could also happen on Linux or Mac, we would still add that platform tag to Linux or Mac, even though we don't have necessarily the intel that it has been carried out on Linux or Mac. So that's kind of a, a different um, way we process things as well. So there may be, you know, some cases here where, uh, you know, perhaps escaping to host is somehow escaping to the Windows host. I think escape to host ultimately will be um, like containers uh, Linux and possibly Windows as well. If we can, we haven't done a lot of research in that area yet, but if we find that there are ways to escape the container to go like into the a Windows environment, then we would certainly add uh, the platform tag there. But we haven't received any in the wild yet really about um, adversaries kind of moving into Windows. Any other questions from folks? Cool. So um, I'll just go back to the point of we were discussing about how like it's, it's all evidence-based as you mentioned, but if we can really demonstrate in a lab that this is how you can break out or move from a pod to a pod, uh, how open are we about including, because we cannot just wait for adversaries. The, the way it works is like, they're also catching up on technology, learning as we all learn, and they're trying to get there, learning more about containers and cloud, and we are seeing techniques that we wouldn't have imagined four years ago, the adversaries are using them now. So if we could demonstrate something in our lab, that, yeah, this is how you would carry out an attack. And it's very, very plausible. It's just that we're just short of evidence on that how open are we about including such stuff so uh, this is uh, this has been uh definitely been a kind of a philosophical conversation uh back and forth with attack for a long time um attack uh itself is kind of rooted in CTI, um, cyber threat intel, what adversaries are doing. There are other models like uh, KPEC, for example, that are kind of more of the theoretical, this is what adversaries uh, could do or what we can do in a research lab, et cetera. I know with cloud and containers, um, you know, the space has been, uh, we're kind of more at the, I guess, the infancy levels of those um, those platforms in attack. So mm -hmm. there's definitely an argument for, you know, we're, 
as research comes out, you know, the adversaries are going to be doing those things, but it's still ultimately attack is rooted in like what adversaries are doing versus what can be done. So mm -hmm. there's an ongoing conversation about that. Um, but as of right now, we're focused on the in the wild adversary behavior. But if there is an existing uh, like technique for, so es escape to host, that's another, I brought this example up before. Uh, if we were seeing adversaries do that in Linux, but uh, there are ways to do that in Windows, like through research, we found that uh, that can happen on Windows as well. We would add Windows to like that existing technique. So to create a brand new technique, we would need some sort of in the wild for it. Okay. to add a platform to an existing technique that could be more research-based. Cool, thanks. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you again, Jen. I think it was a really great presentation. And yeah, uh, we were hoping to uh, even contribute more to this matrix so we can have the final version released soon yeah absolutely thank you guys for uh for listening and you know i um we can talk magno more about it about you know maybe seeing if i can get some feedback from you folks on our detections and things like that um but uh we'll, we'll definitely stay in touch okay yeah great sounds good awesome Andre, uh, do you have any other discussions for today? Uh, let's go over the meeting notes and the attendance, see if anyone has any updates they'd like to share. Okay. Uh, it doesn't look like it, but yeah, if anyone has any updates, feel free to speak up. Or if anyone is new to the group, this is the first six security meeting you're attending. If you yeah. want to introduce yourself, let us know what, you're, what brings you here, what you're hoping to learn or share. I heard a yeah, uh, go for it. Yeah, I, I'm new. Um, hi guys, I'm uh, Marina. Uh, I work at SysDig with uh, Dan. I'm happy to be here. Um, I'm part of a lot of other working groups around regulatory compliance and CS benchmarks. Um, and I thought it's a, a good time to join um, this meeting as well to see how I can contribute. Uh, I have a lot of compliance and risk management knowledge. And I also have a lot of understanding of cloud and containers. So hopefully I can help with uh, this effort. Marina is the super smart one. I'm the funny guy. That's just, you know, that's our dynamic. Everyone. <laughs> I'm glad you think you're funny, pup. Someone should. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, there you go. Just not the only thing I think I can do. But it's all good. Dude. Welcome, Marina. Thanks. Hi. Hi, everyone. I am Idan. I'm from Aqua Security. Also, first time in uh, in this call. Uh, we actually even talked with Jen a little bit about the Mitre uh, framework from containers. Uh, my team, the Team Nautilus, did a lot of work around the malicious uh, attack that we see in the cloud, specifically things that are more related to containers. And that's it. Awesome, welcome. Going through the list here, see who we have. Yeah, I do not know that there are any other updates. Uh, 
Well worth mentioning the schedule for Cloud Native Security Day co-located with KubeCon Europe 2021 is now posted. Some of you might have seen that in the chat. Uh, big shout out to the program committee who helped review all CFP submissions. It was a very arduous task. There was really high quality submissions. It was a, a hard job having to make choices. There is a number of set of submissions that were made that we think would would be a great fit to present on regular weekly calls we're going to be sorting through some of those uh that said well schedules now now posted it would be great if you can help promote and, and advertise the event so we can make that a very participative well attended uh engaging event and we can have good discussion ctf is also happening uh, planning for that still ongoing. We're going to be sharing six different S scenarios. Uh, some of you might have done the capture the flag next year. Ex expect like new things and changes to be made to that. But yeah, that's that. I don't know if if anyone else like I see Richard Julian on the call. Richard, you've been joining Friday's calls on the Secure Supply Chain Working Group and participating in, in writing that. Not sure if you want to like talk a little bit about that to others. Sorry to put you on the spot. No, 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 it's totally okay. I'm, I'm actually here as a, as a proxy for John Meadows for the most part. Um, yeah, I mean, I, the, the progress that we've been documenting in the chat is pretty up to date. Uh, it's pretty much at this point, we're going through the document. I personally am, am reading it out of order in various sections to make sure they work on their own. Anybody who is, is willing and, and, and wants to read a, 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 a a rougher draft of, of that document. Honestly, uh, we, we've gotten a, a summary of all the major recommendations. If anything, I'd love for the feedback on just that part. If you really have 30 minutes and you wanna go through our, uh, our document and just read the bullet point part, um, if there's anything major that you see missing there, you know, let us know. There might be some contextual pieces that would help, but um, yeah, that's where we are today with the, uh, the actual white paper. I see Magno sharing the link to it. Uh, Richard, what do you suggest for the feedback? Is it best left in comments? Is it, do you want to direct folks to the Slack channel for it? Um, I think I, I, I would say go ahead and leave it in the end comments inside the doc. That's where we've been all keeping our feedback. If you are particularly um, good at writing or have you know, want to play uh, editor, uh, you know, we'd, we'd be happy for any sort of recommendations on that side too. And I know, I see Alex is on the call. Uh, there, there's there's a, a lot of folks going and, and, and like working in that capacity. So, but the more the merrier, I think. Fantastic. Suggestions and, and comments are welcome then. And Andres, I do think, is there going to be just breaking outside of that uh, that working group, is there going to be a greater sharing, maybe with SIG Security first, of of that document of maybe just a, a summary of it and and you know vetting a lot of the concepts? Will there be something formal for that? That is very much the plan. Okay. In addition to that, we also managed to secure a KubeCon session to present the the white paper. Uh, so there's, there's right now some, some, some discussion around of like, well, six security has only allowed one talk and we have, we already had one talk to like promote membership and promote the group. Uh, CNCF has some language around sanctioned working groups also being given a maintainer track and that's how we managed to slot that in, but there was some confusion on the back end. So while it's on the schedule, uh, it's not 100% confirmed. So like I said, we, we managed to secure, like we managed to put in there, it's subject to change. We're advocating keeping it on as it's very relevant. There are some other supply chain talks, but they really don't uh, shed as much light or like elicit or extrapolate as much as, as the white paper has done. So we really want to, to make sure that gets represented 
John Meadows is the primary speaker. Uh, Emily Fox and, our, and I are, are there as secondary speakers. But yeah, we, we might even shuffle the like those seats uh, given. Well, a lot of folks have put put in a lot more work into the, the paper than uh, I have personally. <laughs> I participated initially, but I'd be willing to concede my seat uh, depending on well merit of what's gone into the paper. So yeah, stay stay tuned for for updates on that. Uh, I don't expect it to change at this point, but yeah, ongoing discussion. Last, uh, sorry to for the shifting thought process. Uh, I did see Magno at the links for the schedule for Cloud Native Security Day, and also uh, last year's CTF uh, a write up on, on the CTF for last year. I forgot to mention Magno is going to be doing a, a live stream of the CTF. Magno, you want to talk a little bit about that and piece that up a little bit? Sure. No problem. Yeah. So what we uh, were working on is having uh, uh, at least some time on the cloud native Twitch stream to do a live uh, a live commentator uh, session with some um, some people in the community that are, are very famous and understand a lot about Kubernetes security. So, uh, so we're going to present uh, to them some of the challenges from the CTF and ask them, okay, how would you go about solving it, right? So how would you start? Where would you look for this information? Which tools did you use? So me, uh, me Diego, and I think uh, Ron, so we're going to be talking with this, uh, these people. We're still selecting uh, a few guest speakers there and we have, uh, we're going to have like, I think one to two hours and we're going to do these small sessions, right? So after we release one of the challenges, then we, we invite some of the guest speakers to talk about it and, and, and understand their thought process, right? So just, just to have that uh, uh, attacker's mindset of how would they go about uh, solving that problem and looking for, for the flag or, or like how would they compromise that specific cluster or, or look for the the logs or information about it, right? So that's that's what we're gonna do on the, the Twitch stream during the Cloud Native Security Day. Awesome. Yeah, any questions? Okay. Question away. Yeah, if, if nothing else, I'll give time for anyone to raise their hand and, and share. If not, we can adjourn the meeting. See you all next week. Thank you. Uh, parting thoughts. I love you all. You're doing great work. Let's keep it, let's keep the internet secure. Let's do it. <laughs> Thanks again, Jen. Thanks, Magna. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you, Jen. Yeah, thank you. See ya.